So how are we doing with regards to sports concussions nationally? And the answer is horrible. And the reason for that is, is multifactorial. One of it is uh, we, um, we don't have the resources to provide the types of guidance for coaches or trainers or even parents about what concussion is. And we're only now beginning to get to the outreach where we can actually train um, high school coaches or tr uh, trainers or parents about this is what a concussion is and, and this is how you recognize it. And there's this underlying problem, which is a wonderful problem to have in young people, but it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, athletes and young soldiers, um, they all lie. So I, I'm fine, I want to go back in. So they will do every trick in the book in order to manipulate the situation. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, I'm saying it in a, in a way that they want to leave their buddies in the lurch. And Generally speaking, the concept of a second impact syndrome, which was described years ago, I think by Cantu and others, uh, where you have a second head injury uh, or a second concussion and it results in a devastating head injury, those are rare. They do happen, but they're much rarer than what we thought. What I have been more concerned about is the repeat concussions that can um, add to somebody's cost at the end of life or their ability to excel in school or, the, or um, um, depriving them of what their capacity is for plasticity, for learning and memory. Those things I think we need, we need to uh, be more attentive to. That uh, doesn't mean that we should stop young people uh, from playing sports. I mean, there are wonderful things that young people learn about themselves and about working with others in playing sports. I, for one, played football and I'm sure I got my bell rung many times. And um, it, But it taught me a lot about who I was and, and how I could work with other people. And the, uh, th those benefits far outweigh that, those risks. But you know, when, we, when you sprain a knee or you sprain an ankle or you, you put somebody on crutches, you have a visible injury that the coach can see, that the parents can see, and everybody can see, and there's no pressure on the kid. When you have an invisible injury with a concussion, all you see is a, an individual that looks normal and kind of walks, talks normal, wants to get back in. That's, where, that's the danger sign, because they're more susceptible to being, being exposed again for a second injury. We now have, I think, 15 states in the United States that actually have a law on the books that follows the Washington, state of Washington law, the Lysa law. And I was part of that testimony to get that law passed in, in Washington. And we don't know how much we're sacrificing young people in terms of their future. Now, maybe it's only a small percentage of the people that are participating in sport. And I would probably, I would guess that without any good epidemiological data to date, that it probably is a small percentage. But you know, one young person that, that we're going to deprive of a quality of life, or we're going to condemn to early dementia or to a traumatic cerebral encephalopathy, that's one too many.